Okay, let's get started. Um, excited to get the guys back, get going today on the field. Um, quick update on Joe. You know, he had a procedure done yesterday uh, for appendicitis. Procedure went well. Um, he was in there yesterday. He'll be discharged today, and, and uh, the timeline's obviously to be determined. Um, but again, everything went smoothly. It doesn't, you know, because we still got a bunch of other guys that, that we're gearing towards. And so it's a really good opportunity uh, for Brandon and Jake to get more reps than they would have with different groups than they would have. So you got to look at the bright side of things. It's, it's a good chance to really get a chance to see them, evaluate them, let them work with some other guys. Um, and then we go from there. And then when Joe comes back, obviously he, he jumps back into those reps. But um, those guys have to maximize those opportunities they're going to get. Have you planned or did you plan for him to play at all in the preseason? You know, we were going to make those determinations as we got closer to the games, see where we were at as a team, as training camp unfolded. Um, certainly have some thoughts, but but nothing was set in stone either way. Have you talked to Joe? Um, I, I talked to his parents and, and uh, saw his girlfriend last night, but I, I did not speak specifically to him. Pretty good spirits from everything you can gather. Um, I even talked to him today, so I, I don't want to speak for him. Is that still the case preseason-wise, is to be determined? Yes. yes. How long of a timetable have you all been given no, no timetable. I mean, obviously, there's thoughts on people who've had them before and what the response is, and um, we'll just make sure that we're treating them the right way. Do you think he could be back in the building at any time this week? Um, I, I don't know that yet. You know, we, we were full speed ahead today, first day with our players, and so, um, you know, we'll continue to get more information, but but so far, everything's smooth. Does this change your practice script at all, or do you just plug in Brandon and do what you were going to do? Yep, plugged him in. You know, it's it's we've really got our install these first two weeks that we want to stick with, so that won't affect anything. Uh, typically, after those first two weeks is when you start to modify and adjust the plans. Um, so everything will still be right on schedule with how we want to do it. What do you, what's the workload like for Kappa going to be coming back? What do, you, what do you expect out of him? Ease him into it. You know, we don't want to do anything too quickly. Um, he's He's got a good football intelligence level, so he knows what we're doing. Now it's just the reps of actually doing it uh, the way that we want it done. But um, he, he's working into the walkthrough, so he'll be cleared to start easing into things, and, and we'll protect him the best we can as coaches. Same, you know, just keep them out of contact periods, you know, both with the same surgery. Um, Trent and Irwin falls into that as well. You know, those guys are, are cleared. They're doing the walkthroughs. They're doing the individual. They'll do stuff that's not going to be contact related. But, um, again, it's on us to, to at the beginning portion of training camps to make sure we protect them and keep them out of those environments that could uh, set them back. How's Samaj doing and what was he doing? Same thing, you know, so the core, core muscle surgery. Um, same as Alex, and so they're really on the same timeline. They'll both be cleared, both be in the practice today, ease them into it um, in the same manner. Do you expect Will Collins to be ready for the start of the season? I, I do. You know, it's uh, something he's dealt with before, and so like I've said, it's our job to manage him through the order of the portions of training camp, and then um, when we feel like we can get him back into contact, we'll do that. Coach, with the uh, playoffs now part of the culture, will you do anything different in training camp, kind of the build-in for the possibility of a longer season? No, I think that's the way we've always had our mindset structured is um, it's a long 17-game season to begin with. Um, and so, again, we want our players to get the physical workload that is expected in training camp so their bodies feel ready for the first regular season game. Um, but there's no adjustment based on, on how long you anticipate the season going. You have a guy like Joe who's going to miss reps uh, throughout the first week of camp. How does that affect kind of his installation process and the thing, other things you do to supplement that while he's kind of maybe recovering? You know, the, the good news is he's got two years in it. He knows it. it. It's very redundant, you know, probably the early portions. We're, we're starting from day one, um, putting in the office. So he's seen it. He'll still have his iPad. He'll still follow whenever he's in meetings. He's in meetings. Um, we don't expect him to miss a step mentally that way. I'm sure he'd love to have all the physical reps that he could possibly get, but um, he won't be behind the eight ball at all based on what's happened. At what point in camp do you all put new installs in for, for new schemes and stuff like that? And then do it's an adjust as we go, you know, as you get a feel for your team. Um, through the first couple weeks and into that first preseason game. There's always things that you anticipated being really good that maybe you decide aren't as good as we thought. And there's other areas that crop up that we got to spend more time on and some things you stumble into occasionally. Um, so the, those adjustments are un unpredictable on how they'll unfold. And, and uh, that usually happens in mid to late training camp. How much football communication are you allowed to have with Jesse? Can you keep him up to speed on installation and all that? Do you, do you, can you do anything? He's not under contract. So you can't do anything. Correct. No
Well, no repeat mistakes. You know, as, as guys are getting back into the mix, um, physically we want them brought up to speed. They've obviously been doing things on their own, but it's different when you kind of get in a team setting. Um, so, again, just, just understanding how to practice. We spent a lot of time talking about our expectations on how we practice, how we take care of each other, um, how all that looks to set the tone for the remainder of the season. So those are really the early training camp expectations for us. How much do uh, the improvements on the offensive line that you've made open up some different possibilities that you can do with the offense? C- certainly. You know, as the offensive line goes, it allows you to do a lot of different things and, and uh, put stress on the defense in, in run game, pass game. The protections can be solidified. And so we just as a unit want to continue to make steps. And so the line's a big part of that. We expect them to, to continue to improve their play just like we do all the positions and um, we think we've got a good group up front to be able to do that for us. Defense played well last season. What's the next step for that unit to take it to even another level? Yeah, keep keep winning the turnover battle. Keep putting us in position. Regardless, obviously, we want to take care of the ball on special teams and offense. But um, I think an area that they really came on strong with in the latter part of the season um, was creating even more turnovers. And so um, that that's an area, as we know, that, that points directly to wins and losses. Um, who can win that? And it's the defense's job to get as many as they can. Zach, how much and in, in what way do these early days play into position battles? Um, you know, it, it's the battle start from day one of training camp. It's it's who can um, spend their time in the book and minimize their mistakes and, and start to anticipate some of the coaching points that are going to come at them, start to anticipate some things that we'll see from the other side of the ball. Um, so, uh, again, every, everything at this point is an evaluation. Um, as these guys start to get sorted out. We know it is a long process to get through training camp. Um, certainly in the past, there's guys that have started slower that came on strong the more reps they got and vice versa. Um, so we take everything into account as we evaluate some of these things that will take shape over training camp. Zach, how much of this right now, the first week, is refreshing what you guys did in OTAs and making sure, just going over things, making sure people remember they're expected to remember, you know, that's, that's part of their homework. Um, that was what OTAs were to just preview the information so that in training camp, you could hit the ground running and give yourself the best chance to be ready for the season or compete at your position. And so that's the expectation in the NFL is that guys show up and they're mentally ready to go. We obviously start from day one. We don't want to miss any steps and any communication um, to where guys don't know. And so oftentimes it's a little more generic with, with what we call in practice and, um, it'll evolve over the weeks and into the season. But again, we want to make sure that they know the, the right way to run the play or run the defense from day one. And, and so that's a lot of things we spend time on the first week. You've certainly seen that improve over the years. Um, guys now feel so much more comfortable in the systems, the guys that have been here. The guys that get up to speed are newer maybe to the systems. Um, you can see them being coached up by some of the guys that have been here, which is good. Not only their position coaches, but also the guys at their position are surrounding them. And, and these guys just understand what we're trying to get out of a walkthrough, which we just had. It's not a full speed uh, breakneck pace. It's more above the neck communication. And, and I've seen our guys come a long way in that area. It helps. You know, it doesn't hurt. You know, the coaches. Um, we try to do everything we can to get these guys ready, but it's also extremely helpful when you've got leadership at those positions or, or surrounding them on that side of the ball that can really help them along as well in the locker room or after meetings. We only get 11 hours with these guys during training camp, you know, and so um, those are the restrictions we're dealt with. So it's good when they've got these other veteran mentors that can help them along the way. Zach, what kind of, uh, prote- once Joe is cleared to play, what kind of protections or precautions might you mean? Those are things I'll work through. You know, those weren't today problems for me to uh, get ready for practice. So those, those sound more like tomorrow problems. And, and so uh, I'll start to gain that information of what the best course of action is to get him back in the fold. Jack, this might sound like kind of a cheeky question, but is there excitement just based around, you know, being here now, starting training camp and knowing what you did last season and starting up again? Of course. There, there's always so much talk about the next season, you know, all through the off season, all through the summer. Um, so you feel that anticipation and that excitement. So to finally get in here and get on the field and start to rep these plays for the first time, um, it feels like you know the season's finally upon us. And although there's a lot of days before that first game and, and a lot of work to get done, it is good to get back to it. Zach, your thoughts about the, the fan response, season tickets sold out, I mean, the energy is over the top, and they really said with their you know, activity that they believe in what you're doing. 
Yeah, it's tremendous, you know, and we feel it. Um, we, we really do believe that we have the best fan base in all, all of sports, you know, and, and you felt that the entirety of last year, all off season, all summer. Um, there's a lot of anticipation. So I know people are excited. I think we'll see that probably at the practices and at the fan day. And um, so, so really excited to have, um, you know, the, the type of fans that we have. How does rain affect your plans today? It's the best, you know. It's, uh, you know, truthfully, you don't, you don't get many opportunities to work in the rain. You might not get it all training camp. You might not get it the first eight weeks of the season. Then week nine, you're playing a huge divisional game, and it's pouring down rain. And, and all you've ever done is have an equipment manager soak a ball and hand it to the quarterback. You know, so you have to take advantage of the opportunities you get. Um, we didn't really throw during that, that portion right there. Uh, but, but it is good in training camp to get a couple of rain days just for, for the skill guys, the, the linemen to keep their footing. Um, it's good work that you got to take advantage of when you can get it. How much focus at this point, Zach, on the players? What, are, what, what about your coaching staff in the first few days of camp and getting up to speed? How, what's, what is it like? Um, I like what I've seen. You know, they're very prepared. And, and these guys are ready to go. You know, we usually come back in the office, you know, several days before the players get in here just to, to get reacquainted with each other after a long summer. Um, but I think we've got a really good staff. You know, it's, it's, um, they do a really good job putting our guys in great position. They're great idea guys. Uh, they're great managers of personalities. They know how to push the right buttons on their position groups and in their units. And so just really proud of the collection of guys that we have in the building and, and uh, think that they're a top-notch staff. How would you characterize the comfort level? Very comfortable. You know, it's um, a lot of things can be unspoken at this point. You know, we, we, we really know what's expected um, and which direction. And you can make some quick adjustments with, with minimal communication at times. And so just really overall, it's a good group that works well together. I'm sure we take it for granted, to be honest with you, myself. I'm sure there'll be a day where these guys were head coaches and they're gone, and you realize, you know, some of the extra communication that's got to take place. But, but right now, um, it is what it is. They're here. I'm glad that they've all been here for four years. Um, I think our players can feel that um, the chemistry. I, I think is probably the best way to put it. You know, and they know that we're all on the same page and see things eye to eye. Freddie, uh, been really impressed the more I've been around him. You know, he, he kind of knocked our socks off in the interview process. Uh, just hearing, uh, you know, he, he worked for Blake Anderson, played for Blake Anderson. And just to hear Blake talk about him, you can get a sense of um, when a guy really likes somebody <laughs> and, and probably doesn't want him to leave, but know it's in their best interest to do it. And so I'm really appreciative that at the point in the season that we hired him, uh, Blake allowed us to do that. It speaks a lot for him. But Freddie has really hit the ground running here. Um, really impressive with his quarterback background. But not only that, but he's coached running backs. He's been with receivers before. Um, he's worked up front with the linemen. So uh, to have that background is critical for our uh, younger side of the coaching staff, to have guys like him and Brad Craig Thorpe and, and uh, Jordan Kovacs. And um, we just got a really good collection of, of young coaches um, who have been here for any, any number of years that, that we know that are going to continue to grow and be outstanding guys in this profession. Just, they just need to be their self, you know, and, and you're competing, obviously, in battles to make the team, but you just have to focus less on what the guys around you are doing and more on what yourself are. No repeated mistakes, getting better in your phase of the ball, plus special teams every step of the way, um, proving that you can be coachable and dependable. And, um, you know, those are the things that we, we strive to see those guys do. And, and it's fun to watch those guys evolve over time. And when it gets to cuts, that's never a fun time, but – for the guys who do make that next cut and they make the next step and then they make the team, it's fun to watch kind of their evolution um, from day one until that, that point in time when they make the team. Thank you all. Thank you.